Oh, hey guys. So, um, I, like everyone else in the world, is totally consumed by the Boston Marathon bombing media coverage and, or should I say, lack thereof. And I was just talking to Carol, my mother, last night about um, the people of Boston and how fucking tough they are. And I don't think that, you know, people who haven't lived there really understand it. And I feel like it just, you know, everyone's seen Goodwill Hunting and, you know, everyone has seen a good Mark Wahlberg movie. And that kind of conveys it, but not really. So, like, here's the dynamic. First of all, you have this, you know, town of, you know, Irish, incredibly patriotic locals who love their city beyond. And then you have to take into account this. The city is the world's biggest deal for, like, the entire New England area, which includes parts of Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island, and, like, all of Massachusetts. So, first of all, what, you know, what other urban city can claim that many, um, you know, that much that much land and that many people who, for them, it that is their central metrop metropolis. So, like... There's that dynamic. Like, they are the world's biggest deal for the entire string of states up there. Whereas, you know, I am a, I am a native of Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is, like, so... It just does not have this, you know, this... Um, what is even the word? This pride and this attitude. Philadelphia is actually incredibly humble, as it should be, because Philadelphia has lived in the shadow of you know, New York, its entire existence. And they're also dealing with D.C., another city that's kind of, you know, when it comes to big cities and pride has been in you know, New York shadow. Of course, you know, D.C. is the center of politics and Philadelphia has its own special things. But really, like, let's be real, you know, they're they're both within driving distance and a very short driving distance, a couple of hours of, you know, the world's largest, um, or the, the country's largest metropolis. So, you know, they get, they get, they have a different attitude about it. But then you have Boston, who is, you know, a small city, but they have this incredible heart and this incredible fight. Like, they're fucking crazy. And, you know, what other, with regard to sports teams, they legitimately come to the table you know, with New York sports and New York everything else. And they're like, we're fucking here. Like, we're just as good as you are, slash we're better. And like, I don't understand why you're not quite recognizing that. And New York is kind of like, wait, what? Wait, what? I don't even understand. Like, New York doesn't even get it. But like, Boston's like, what the fuck? And they're all like, you know, super angry about it. And they're super charged. And they're super spirited. And they're a fucking force to be reckoned with. And I just... I don't think you really get it until you live there. And it's also a really strange dynamic because you have these local people who really, you know, color the local culture. But then you also have these transient um, academics who traipse in and out of the city in four-year cycles. You know, there's a new group in and a new group out all the time. So, you know, that adds another dimension. And these, these um, students come from all different countries. They come from all different states. Um... And, you know, they, ha they leave their own mark on the city. So you have this really strange dynamic. And they can also be totally pretentious. So you get this, like, very high-low thing going on. Um, and then, of course, you have, you know, the people um, descended from pilgrims who are still there who live in Beacon Hill and are very conservative and only wear beige. So it's a, it's a crazy dynamic of, like, these three groups. And it makes for a city with a lot of heart. And I just wanted to explain that to you guys. And it's also the toughest city I've ever lived in. When I lived in Boston, I was robbed. Um, my house was robbed while people were home, even upstairs. Like somebody slipped in without us noticing. I lived in a house of seven girls. I was robbed, I think, three times. Um, there's another story where four of my roommates and I were just innocently walking in Austin. And this group of girls, Boston natives, came out and just, like, got in a fight with us. Of course, I didn't get in a fight personally because I'm a huge wuss, and I was, like, I didn't run away, but I was, like, it had happened across the street from me, and, like, I was in shock, and I didn't realize what was going on, and my former friend Janine got punched in the face, and my friend Dana had a black eye, and Leo was, like, kicking the shit out of some girl, and, like, 
kicking her in the stomach with her stilettos and like it was a whole thing but like that happened I have lived in New York for 11 years and you know knock on wood nothing remotely of that nature has ever happened so you know don't mess with that city dude it is really 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 tough so that's it I just wanted to share my thoughts on Boston and how I know that that coward is just so in for it. When they catch him, they're going to fucking kill him. Those people are whack in the best way. Okay, bye.